Hi all. This has become enormous news for the world of chess and AI. This match, this hundred game match between Alpha Zero and Stockfish. This is the third game now which was featured in the research paper about the match. So they took 10 and they highlighted these particular 10 games out of the 100 game match. So this is the third one. Alpha Zero playing white this time. Knight f3, Knight f6, c4. It seemed to like, after its four hours of mastering chess, the English opening that fared very well. Uh, the French defense, for those interested, it it didn't last for that long, I think about an hour. Korokan lasted a bit longer, <laughs> but eventually it settled on the Berlin defense with black. So anyway, with white, the English opening apparently is, is quite good. B6, we see D4, E6, G3, Bishop A6, and now Queen C2, protecting that pawn, C5. And this is really fascinating, this position here, because if you look at a lot of Kasparov games, uh, he kind of played this with great success, this kind of pawn sacrifice. So it seems to have learned this idea as well that you can potentially sack this pawn here. Well, it's too dangerous in this position. Knight takes d5, there's queen e4 check in any case. But let's see, after bishop b7, bishop g2, yeah, just sacking the pawn. So it seems to have learnt this that this is quite a good way to approach the position. Knight takes d5, white castles, knight c6, rook d1, and Stockfish ignores that attack on the knight with bishop e7. If rook takes d5 here, then there's knight b4, forking queen and rook quite safely. So we see queen f5 instead, knight f6, and now e4. So there's good compensation here, and this has kind of been established in a lot of Grandmaster games. This kind of gambit here is actually quite promising for white. Black now weakens uh, itself on the dark squares with g6. It's quite an, a nuisance already because the e5 is going to be looking at d7 pawn. If black casually castled, you can see that e5 is a bit of a nuisance on d7, and in fact, Taking on d7 with the rook might not even be the strongest. Knight c3 is also a very strong position. So black wanted to avoid this queen being there anyway and played g6. Queen f4. This is better than queen h3. I believe h5 might actually be playable. Yeah. So queen f4 keeping the queen quite central. Black castles. e5 now. And you can see definite compensation here. Queen g4. Looking at d7, rook e8, just ignoring that. But white's not interested in taking on d7. Knight c3, queen b8. So there's quite a bind on the position here, positional bind. Knight d5, bishop f8, bishop f4. So this reinforcing the e5 point. So black is already passive without too much counterplay. And if ever the knight moves back, there's knight f6 h3 just improving the position slightly what is black doing knight e7 the knight comes to e3 now so it looks after f5 from there on e3 bishop c6 and now rook d6 these are nasty infiltrations potentially on dark squares f6 as well is vulnerable we see knight g7 rook f6 so installing the rook on f6 here Queen b7, bishop h6, knight d5. This knight's taken, bishop takes rook d1. Now we see knight e6, which shields at least the d7 pawn in some lines, and offers the exchange of bishops. That's taken up. Bishop takes f8, rook takes f8. Can it be proven that black is significantly weak on these dark squares? We see queen h4. Bishop c6, and the queen actually now just parks on h6. So there's potentially very, very dangerous ideas here of just simply taking on e6, followed by knight g5 in some lines. Here it's 
not possible it seems otherwise it would have been played there's probably lateral defenses like rookie seven available so we see actually just more blockade rook d6 and black actually gives up now the light square bishop and it appears to want to go pawn hunting so this is classic uh engine style just going for a pawn over here but Alva zero is going for the king h4 as Kasparov says uh, there's a quotation which is something like if your house is on fire on the queen side on the on the king side you don't worry about a pawn on the queen side rather so yeah the house might be on fire here with h5 we see queen a5 a bit more cautious not going for this pawn if we look at this queen takes a2 you can see that actually this is quite a dangerous attack after h5 it looks pretty dangerous indeed queen takes b2 for example h takes g so this continuation and with bishop d5 to follow this is getting exceptionally dangerous as i did was just taking and taking and mating on g7 soon so for example like this this is just an example variation so the pawn wasn't taken we see queen a5 but white has this magnificent bind on the position rook d1 actually it seems as though there was an interest in at least stopping queen e1 check there but now after c4 curiously in this particular position which eyes e5 now that pawn's a bit weaker white does play rook d5 allowing queen e1 check here and then we see c3 that's taken queen takes h5 just going for the attack now trying to weaken black's king a bit more rook e7 and now bishop b3 this looks like a great diagonal to i black's king with queen e1 bishop parks on b3 now rook d8 and now rook f3 queen e4 queen comes back looking at putting more pressure in that center queen g4 which looks to be wanting to take a pawn here that's parried with bishop d1 if queen takes h5 here then there's rook takes f7 hitting the queen so we see queen e4 keeping that pin on the rook at least h6 a form pawn is it significant here because you might think the knight's keeping out the queen how is the queen going to enter to help this form pawn actually the knight goes to c7 here rook d6 now knight e6 bishop b3 maybe this knight's going to be eliminated and then queen g5 possibly this is also giving up e5 so this is very interesting and that's actually taken so white doesn't seem to care about its pawns it's it's probably judged enough compensation here even if it is looking far slower at, in terms of volume and moves it's the quality that classic quality versus quantity so okay rook d5 and there's not that many great spots uh for the queen here the queen wanted to maintain itself it seems on the diagonal against that form pawn and it looks a bit ridiculous queen h8 uh, i guess something like queen a1 might be uh that there might be other issues maybe it can be interrupted so anyway we see this a little bit ridiculous looking move queen h8 now queen b4 looking at that rook on e7 knight c5 and here it gets super interesting so not only we have in this game already <laughs> the double pawn sacrifice we have now guess what guess what white plays in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video starting from now okay it is an awkward configuration for black we see rook takes c5 B takes now queen h4 looking at the rook again from this angle rook d e8 and the idea <laughs> is revealed of this which is actually not actually to try and checkmate the black king but kind of checkmate the black queen here or at least just reduce it to being completely useless with i hope you can guess 
rook f6. This is a very unusual uh, goal for sacking the exchange, actually, to kind of uh, kill the opponent's queen like this. Rook f8, queen f4, and white's just building up pressure here on f7, it seems. A5, G4, the prison sentence for the queen is being set here with, with G5. That would leave this queen free to attack things. There's a loose pawn over here, potentially. D5, that seems a bit desperate already, actually. That's taken. The bishop is attacked, the bishop retreats. A4, and now, yeah, the prison of the queen is set here with G5. Well, at least frees this queen. The white queen a3 queen f3 the queen can at leisure try and scoop up a pawn or two rook c7 queen takes a3 and out of total desperation asphyxiation embarrassment humiliation and stockfish just gives up the queen here he gets fed up of this position but it's just totally hopeless the game continues a few moves and here i believe the operator's just resigned after a4 it's there's nothing black's doing to stop this this is a bit like uh, a crazy engine caricature of many Kasparov games in this Queen's engine line with the d5 pawn sack and that just became a very very popular idea against this variation uh, of the Queen's engine defense a very thematic gambit the way it was conducted in this game is truly in the spirit of things of of, I believe established patterns if you if you looked at high level like Sparrow games so it's it's a wonderful thing uh, we I think we're gonna gain a lot of very interesting reusable ideas for for human chess probably more than, than standard engines it was just a very very dynamic attacking game and the idea of imprisoning the opponent's queen is is a great feature of this particular game I found quite amusing hope you did too comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much